I usually use these illustrations as a wrap up, but today I'm starting with it because I know on the YouTube videos, uh, not everyone sticks with it for the full 15 minutes. And this set of patterns for <clears throat> you know, reservoirs, lakes, early summer uh, is so important. I want to make sure that I get this uh, information to folks that may not watch you know, the full, full video. And there, there are a couple different things going on here. Uh, certainly there's a lot going on with this illustration, but um, right off the bat, <clears throat> Brent got a nice 19 and a half in, in this sort of area. And what we have are the, these bluegill beds, these little honeycomb spots, and they're, it's, it's shallow, and this was early in the morning. He got a nice 19 and a half in a shallow area that we went back to and saw bluegill beds in. Uh, and the bass, for the most part, are post-spawn, but they will hang out in this deep water and come in and just grab, just in the confusion of all the, uh, the bluegill defending their beds and these smaller ones going in to raid for eggs. Um, it's a good, good early summer pattern, you know, for these, these large mouth, you know, just to target these areas, the, especially the deeper edge of the, uh, the bluegill beds. I got a nice five pounder today and that was in bank shade. Um, we started out with the water temperature today uh, in the upper 60s and um, by, by midday we were in the mid to upper 70s. So that will tell you what the, the light penetration, especially in these, these uh, shallow areas where you know, the bluegill are, are spawning, uh, they don't want to be in this you know, too, much, too much longer into summer, but they're, they're still in, in the area. Um, Certainly, where there's less depth, less uh, sunlight penetration, I've illustrated that with the yellow, all the sunlight coming down, you're going to have cooler water. And that's going to become uh, a huge pattern later in the summer. Uh, you know, the thermocline will set up and you'll have, have a lot of hot water in the upper, you know, the upper even 15, 18 feet. Depending on your on how deep your your reservoir is, you're going to go deep and find structure. And certainly, we marked a lot of fish, and uh, I think Brent caught a couple in the 17 foot range uh, today. Most of our fish today marked on the uh, the depth finder were that were that were not up shallow like this. We're in that 12 foot range. So, cool bank shade, um, outside edges of, of bluegill beds, and um, and certainly the deep water. You know, right outside of, of where um, where they just spawned uh, and where the bluegill are still spawning. First example of deep water there. So let's go watch and, and uh, watch the day and see these these three patterns unfold. Looks like Brent's starting us off right today. You said second cast. Yep. Where did he hit? Smack jack with the green back. Nice. Hold him up, buddy. Yep. Ooh, that's a thick one. Yeah, nice belly on him. Swing his tail the other way, reverse this hands. Way. Yeah, that's a more natural, yep. See a fishy. What's up, dude? Good boy. <laughs> I love when I just sit there. Nice, Steve. Thanks. Let's go ahead start today. Yep. Yep. I was way off. Short too. Almost right in here. Well, yeah. We got a little bit of a, I guess, a delta from the creek at the top of the reservoir here. Yeah. And you can see a sand hump where all that, all that, uh, that brush and stuff is piled up. We got a channel here, and on the other side of it. I got like four and a half, five feet deep yeah. water over there, so there's yeah, a lot of there. transitional water from deep to shallow. Yeah. I got a new lure I'm playing around with today that I made with a new Do It Soft Baits mold. This is a uh, nine and a half inch ribbon tail worm that I'm working two ways. Right now, today, this morning I'm working at top water. I've actually made it with floating soft plastic and um, I'm just kind of bringing it along the surface rod tip high like a snake and it's staying up you know it's on incredible. surface I can pause it and it stays there. 
but we're hoping a pattern that is typical for early summer uh, sets up where we we're going to go down to one of the major points the first major point back in the direction of the main lake which is where we think these these bigger post spawn females are going to go and we're going to rig this this big ribbon tail on a 3 8 ounce dragon head and fish it a little bit deeper but I can't pass up some top water action this morning that thing looks amazing look at the wake I've had several short strikes with a nine and a half where I know that they've you know they've had it in their mouth but maybe not all the way even you know fed them a little bit of line to make sure that hook was in them but I think I'm trying a different approach I also have this this shorter ribbon tail um, I think this one's five inches or so maybe four and three quarters so twins just different different sizes of the same thing I'm gonna throw that shorter one on this um, this point leading out of the spawning flat here see if I can pick up the one that uh, that I actually got a good look at I actually had him come up behind and throw a wake up behind the uh, the floating nine and a half incher and I uh, grabbed it moved about you know three or four feet with it I set the hook and it actually ripped it in half so I'll give him that small bite he's looking for. All right, I'm zooming out to the point, and uh, it's important to check your depth finder on the way out. I actually did some zigzagging, uh, shallow and deep, and I'm looking for the fish and to figure out what depth they're at. The hotter it gets, the further into summer, the deeper they're going to go. I'm seeing them around the uh, 12 foot mark pretty consistently. 11, 11 and a half, 13, 12. one on the ribbon tail not a real big guy but I think the big ones are around came out to this first point back in the direction of the main lake we got a little bit of a breeze coming in here I'm in 15 feet he was up a little shallower I'm gonna I'm gonna go deep smaller ribbon tail on some lay downs uh, leading out into some deeper water I'm in about 12 feet right here oh, hi I'll let you go I switched to the bird I kept getting follows on the uh, on the ribbon tails where they'd follow it back to the boat but they weren't eating it so, decided it's time to go with something a little bit more subtle. Something I got confidence in. You know, you experiment and it's good to learn new baits, but sometimes when you haven't gotten a bite in a while, you just, you gotta go with what you know. So, that worked out. See you, fishy. Right on the deep end of a beaver hut. You can feel the eighth ounce dragon head just kind of ticking over the uh, over the branches. Felt it pop free of one and pop right in this guy's mouth. on the outside edge of the bluegill beds I can see all the little discs all the circles up there they're not bass beds they're all clustered together and I think these post spawn uh, bass will hang out and just in the confusion of these these panfish beds 
they just pick off whatever they can. The smaller bluegill that are looking to prey on the the eggs. Whatever. A lot going on. A lot of life right there. He was right on the outside edge hunting. Here's some more over here. Good early summer pattern. Honeycombs. Get one! Yo! There was a bigger one following. Oh. In the shade under the trees. How big is yours? been in kind of three different distinct places right on the bank on wood where especially where there's shade oh hi there um, in and around the little honeycomb spots all the little collections of bluegill beds which they go in and raid where they're out in like 12 feet um, especially where there's there's a grass edge and deeper water but not really deep deep water you know we're we're still in the upper 60s, lower 70s, so I don't think they've gone all the way deep. Oh! That is a good one. Ha-ha! <laughs> yes! That may be it, Dutt, man. That might be it. I'm coming. I didn't expect a big one like this to be that shallow. Oh, yeah! I'm loosening on the drag. Oh, heck yeah. Yes! yes. Woohoo! Yeah! <laughs> That's a heavy, heavy. That's a big. Oh, yes! Ah. <laughs> Let me see that bad boy. Oh my God. <laughs> Beautiful fish. I think that's a personal best. Holy crap. Oh, and it fell right out. Awesome. <laughs> nice, dude. Congrats. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> That is awesome. God, that's a beautiful bass. Oh, lively. Did you get him on your uh, crawfish thing here? No, I got him on the, the bird. Large bird. I'm gonna have to get a bird. Okay, let me drop. Yeah, oh, cool. Okay, I just had that. Oh, that's a pretty bass. Okay, moment of truth. What do I got? It's, it looks like it's over five. I don't. I don't think it's gonna go to five and a half. I need it to be a personal best. Nah. Nah, he's like right at five. You wanna try digital and see what it says? Dude, this fish is what it is. That's a that's a really nice five pounder. You gotta get the release. Yeah. Well, well I wanna get good shots with my with my camera. So. Yeah, if you give me that, I'll take them. Yep. Heavy. Got our nice shots of this five pound even. 21 inch, nice post spawn large mouth. What do you think, Brett? How much would this fish have weighed with eggs? Six. You think it was six? Yeah. Real thin at the base where your finger is. So yeah. I think he lost a lot of weight there. Yeah. Well, it's a big body fish, big, big mouth. That's the biggest I've caught since last June, so about a year. Beautiful. Man. Thank you very much, fishy. I'm gonna go back to your gotta get a mouth. That is awesome. <laughs> oh did he burp on me. Alright, see ya. I gotta go.
I love that part. Awesome. I just love that part when I go back. Sweet. Nice job. Congrats. Thanks, man.